maybe this is not a part of it at all. You understand, I'm, I'm not here to in, invent a new story. I'm here to try and to give you an idea of, of what these people have said and what their experience has been. Um, yet during that period of time, it is not a condemning light that they meet. Quote, yet I always felt the presence of a very powerful, loving being. So whatever was going on was, was felt in that way. Uh, the other thing that happens during the life review, apparently, is that you can feel how others felt. If you somehow have uh, hurt them, you feel that hurt. Now you understand what it is that you did. Okay. Um, there is also coming back. Somewhere along the line, a decision has to be made. Are you, will you, or are you going back? And in general, for these people who have come back, quote unquote, for those people, coming back was, is always a personal decision. Maybe, it, maybe ultimately, maybe the ones who don't come back made the decision to go the other direction. Uh, but it is, in, in any event, the decision is not just, you must go back, you must go back, although they are often urged to do so. And the most frequent reason for going back is something like, well, I've got three kids to raise. Well, my wife has got an alcoholic problem, and if I don't go back, I don't know if she's going to get through it. Or something like that. There is. There is some purpose, some cause, some reason for going back. Well, I did have the experience on, on coming back. I, uh, a story was told to me when, some, when my sister heard I was going to be doing stuff like this. She said, you need to know the here, story about Reverend so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Now, we all knew Reverend so-and-so from back in the days when we were growing up. And Reverend so-and-so had a cardiac problem, went to the hospital, and, quote, had a coma. Something happened, and he was resuscitated. And when he came back, he was mad as a wet hen. He said, why did you do that? I was in a wonderful place, and you tore me away from that to come back to this messy world. This is ridiculous. I... You know, and he carried on like this so that the whole hospital heard about it, knew about it, and then wrote a letter to the medical staff saying, if I should ever <laughs> lapse into a situation like that, you are forbidden to try to bring me back because I certainly don't want that to happen. So his coming back, I don't know what happened back there. He must have thought that he had done everything in life that he needed to do, and somehow this was all a mistake. But well, that's just, the, when you were saying these people chose to do this. They chose to do that. Well, he probably except did that to, with resuscitation, they didn't choose to. Somebody else did, did the resuscitating. I think generally the medical profession uh, does its absolute best to keep you alive. And, you know, and, and if there is heart surgery, I understand they just literally put you on, hook on to a machine and the heart stops and then they take, start it up again and, you know, so that's out of your control. You're right again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just thought that that was... Somewhere, uh, somewhere around that is a border, a limit, beyond which these individuals do not go. They're, they come to that limit or that border, and then they, well, okay, 
now I've got to make a decision, and maybe that's, and that's what forces it. And in that respect, I have to tell a story about my dad, if you don't mind. This is a storytelling time, after all. When there was a time when he had uh, surgery, he had to come to recuperate with us, and while he was there, he said, listen, I have to tell you this story, what happened, my dad, what, what, was, what was going on? He says, well, I, I came down this road, it wasn't, it wasn't a tunnel for him, it was some sort of a road. I came down this road and there was this big door there. And he said, in a very grave way, he said, and you know, that looked like a very important door. And on the door, in some fashion, was written, or he believed was said, you may enter here. And he thought, the emphasis was on may, it looks like I can go or not go. And then he got to thinking about it, and uh, by that time my mother had passed away. This is now two or three years later. I think he must have thing, been thinking about another lady, and the, perhaps they had talked about getting married. And so he said, I think I should go back and see what my responsibility is to this lady. He did go back. They did get married and lived together for 16 years until he died in his 90s. So somewhere along the line, he had found also a, a border or a limit. I'd like to suggest, yes. and you can cut this out, <laughs> that um, once again, the, you know, there are two sides here. Yes. You know, the medical people are doing everything they can to keep you alive. And that's how you feel, perhaps. But I question how much choice there is. I mean, obviously, you can hold your breath until you die, you know. Uh, I question that a little bit. There is how an, much choice there is another is. story. The story is that uh, this woman is looking out of her kitchen window. And as she looks out, she sees her brother, who had died at least, he was at least by that time died, dead, I literally, actually. And what she saw was this brother of hers at the age of 12 come up to a river and hesitated, not knowing exactly what to do, but saw his father and mother cross the stream and then walked across the river to them. Now this, what do you mean, walking on water? No, I, the impression you get is that the river of life, if that's what this was, is solid. It's, think of it as diamonds that are packed together. This is, this is somebody's experience she, this is a, a woman's experience, what she thinks she saw, you know, in a near-death experience or just in regular? No, everyday? no, this was a, a yeah, this was, was a kind of a vision. I guess I'm trying to illustrate or demonstrate what a border or limit might, might be and it might be. You know, one of the great, uh, all, some of the great stories about uh, the Divine Com Comedy, for example, has a river in it. There are many spiritual songs about rivers and limits. So this is this is not unusual to have that kind of a story told. Excuse me. Now one more question on yes. the little story. Um, when she saw that vision, did it explain to her how her brother died? Well, we know how the brother died. And how did he die? He had cancer and he oh, passed away. Oh, as a 